everyone. Welcome. Welcome. We are live uh, on this Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you guys, uh, all the veterans out there. Uh, I've been working with a hauling company that's veteran owned and boy, what a, uh, what a hardworking group of people, I, I will say. So uh, thank you guys for all that you do. And yeah, welcome. Great. I see a few people jumping on. Awesome. Um, if you are new to my channel, I'll give you a, a, a quick introduction before we get into our, our Q&A time. Uh, my name is Katherine Lawrence, and I'm a professional organizer. And I've uh, been working in my organizing business, on my business for, uh, I started in 2002. So uh, quite, a, <laughs> quite a few years under my belt. And then a couple of years ago, I decided hey, you know, I have all this information and I'd been training organizers in my own business and in my own uh, location. I'm in the uh, central Virginia area. I've been doing that for a number of years. Why don't I just upload all of that knowledge and all of that information to YouTube and then offer you guys some uh, coaching and training as well. So if you're new here, please uh, check out my uh, videos on working as an organizer. I've got quite a few up there. And then I also talk quite a bit about downsizing and extreme clutter and uh, really, you know, I say I'm a professional organizer, but I feel like at the end of the day, I'm really a professional declutterer, <laughs> if that's not really a word. Um, but I feel like I, I really excel in the downsizing and decluttering of um, this side of the business. And uh, I, I really hats off to all you guys who do the really pretty organizing. I know there's some wonderful channels out there that everything is very serene and minimal. I love watching those as well. And I love all those images on Instagram and Pinterest as well. Um, hi, guys. Okay, good. I've got some uh, some old friends here logging in. Hello. Um, hold on, hold on. Am I, is my chat not on? Well, yes, it is. I don't know. Um, I feel like you guys should be popping up there, but I don't see anyone. Hello. Awesome. Welcome. Great. Yeah. And as you guys know, this is all about asking questions. So feel free at any time to go ahead and put some uh, questions there in the comments. Hello. Okay, good. We've got our UK, England, Can uh, Canada, <laughs> Seattle. Oregon, awesome. So we've got got some West Coasters and uh, some from across the pond. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I don't know. Now my, my chat is up. Good. good. Good to know everything is working as we dive into this. Uh, so, so yeah, that's just really been my goal with my channel is, you know, when you've been in so many homes and so many situations and organized so many spaces and, and done so much downsizing um, and also recently well really in the last maybe year and a half um i've been working as one of the support organizers on the television show hoarders and that's that actually sparked me to create a hoarders course uh, a course on how to deal with extreme clutter because i don't know about you guys but when i watch the show and it's a wonderful show and it tells a fantastic story and of, of course the focus is on mental health because as we know Hoarding disorder is a, a very legit and, and paralyzing uh, disease. And um, the, the show is very much focused on drawing attention to that and getting those therapeutic resources to the hoarder, which is fantastic um, and great. But then the last 20 minutes of the show, they go, oh, look at all this stuff that happened. And they show this usually like fairly empty house or a house that's been staged. And I'm sure some of you guys are wondering like, well, how did that happen? Because they really don't show the cleanup or clear out and clean up process as much during the show. There's just that few little things they show at the end. So uh, my latest course, which I'm going to be telling you guys about is a call tackle the horde and that is going to t walk you guys through everything that happens behind the scenes to actually uh, eliminate the clutter and and how we're able to do that in a couple of days with big crews of people all working together and everyone has a role and and there's all these things that have to go on to make that happen so i'll be talking about that course today 
and awesome. Let's see, Angie said I emailed you some questions. Did you just do it? Uh, I, I, hold on, I'm going to check back in my email because I've been trying to put any questions that came through in like a special little inbox area because of course my, my emails are organized. Um, but I'm not, I don't know, I'm not sure if I have anything from you. If, if it's under a different name or, um, but just ask it, just ask it while, while you're here. Go ahead and put it in the comments so that, so that I can catch you. Um, South Carolina. Okay, great. Wow, lots of, lots of wonderful people here from England. That's, that's awesome. That's my, uh, my homeland. <laughs> now I'm here in the South. Um, Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. So Sarah started the course this morning. I'm working with a hoarder. Oh, hold on. Let me pull this up. Great. So Sarah started the course this morning. I'm working with a hoarder in, in her craft room. Cannot walk in and lots of small stuff from floor to ceiling. Yes, yes. So this is the big issue with those extremely cluttered spaces we cannot organize them or declutter them in the same way that we would go into a client's home that has like light clutter or daily clutter or um, space to kind of move around. We would get into those tight spaces. We, we actually don't have room often in that space to do our sorting. And we always start with our sorting and, our, and then move to our decision making before we do our, our put away type organizing. Awesome. So I hope... Um, uh, yeah, you should be learning quite a bit from the course. Before I forget, let me just put a link to the course uh, that I'm talking about. This is this is my new course, Tackle the Horde, where um, I actually give you guys all the behind the scenes stuff that um, I do when I'm working on hoarders to actually clear those houses out that never makes it to to the show. <laughs> it's always on the cutting room floor, guys. So I've got, don't worry, I got this course for you. Uh, it's very affordable, 27 bucks, so not gonna set you back. And I have to tell you, if you're a professional organizer um, and you are wanting to take on those large jobs, there's a lot of benefits to that. First of all, um, uh, some organizers do not service that population at all. They do not want to work with extreme clutter. So you're probably going to be able to get referrals in your community if you let all the other organizers know in your area that you're you're willing to take on those bigger jobs. Um, guess what? You're going to charge more money for those jobs. They're going to last longer. They're more time intensive. You are going to bring in a crew. So you are now the project manager. And um, so they're a lot more work. But guess what? It's it's more lucrative in your business than just going in and, and doing one closet for a client and then trying to find another client. Um, if you can uh, understand how to tackle these large whole home downsizing projects, they will keep you busy for quite a while and there is certainly income to be made. So if you're not sure how you're going to do that and you're curious, go ahead and take that course. Like I said, it's only 27 bucks, so it's not going to set you back and you'll, you'll get what you need to take on those bigger jobs. Great. Yeah, and then... Um, Oh, I guess you guys are <laughs> that side. You guys are chatting amongst yourselves, and you know that they don't have enough. Yeah, so that's that's where the organizing team really can help tackle. Um, I, I mean, you think about this client. You know, even if they've done the mental health work to uh, enable them to get to a place where they're ready to let go and they're they're ready to make good decisions, and they're not. Um, you know, super anxious about it. Like they, they're ready, as we say, like they're, they're ready to uh, make that transition to um, a more, you know, streamlined lifestyle. Even if they're ready to do it, guess what? It would take them the rest of their lives to sort through and haul out each of these individual items at a time. 
So often I, I'm working with people who are just ready to downsize in their life. Maybe they're empty nesters or retirees and they're like, okay, I'm ready. I, I want to let it go. Or they've done that mental health work and they're, they're ready to, to do that downsizing. There's still quite an, an art to actually getting the items out of the house. And it's not just as straightforward as calling junk callers. Um, you really need to sort things, you know, where are the important papers? Where are the valuable items like jewelry? Where's the genealogy? You know, all of that has to kind of be dealt with and you really need to pull everything out and sort it so that people don't lose those really important things. So those jobs are a little different than your standard um, organizing jobs. And so we're, we're gonna tackle them a little differently. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna back it up a little bit here. Uh, okay, so uh, that's right, we got Sarah started the course. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this is kind of the challenge, not even for extreme clutter, but that you guys are gonna have with your clients. There's literally just not enough physical space to put everything away, right? Um, so if you guys have watched my videos before, you know you, you really have to start with the, the decluttering process. Um, and I have to tell you, just working as an organizer for all these years, it's not as simple as going into someone's house and putting things into, into containers. Because really, even in you know, nicer homes or homes that aren't hoarded or even homes that have good storage. It's pretty incredible how quickly people can fill up storage and just not have space for the things that they want to keep. So there's always a lot of, of juggling, but you have to start with the decluttering process first. Um, yeah, so this very packed, it sounds like, yeah, you're starting this craft room. Um, yeah, those crafty things, right? They take up a lot of space. And, you know, as organizers, we understand uh, or you certainly should understand about vertical space and maximizing the space you have. And that's where the products come in and shelving and picking the right furniture to maximize your storage. So all of those are elements that as a professional organizer, you're really going to need to master, um, but then there's always that sort of tipping point where it's just, it's just not all going to fit. And then that's where that really nuance comes in with uh, speaking to your clients about how they're going to keep all of this when there's just not enough space. So Angie, this is um, actually, this is a pretty frequent question that I get about estimates. Um, how, how to answer estimates, like how, I guess questions about estimates on how long a whole apartment will take, or even a smaller room, like a, a room or a closet that's full. Tips for those resistant to declutter obstacles, obsolete <laughs> tech, like VHS and slides. So uh, it absolutely sounds like you're you're dealing with someone who has a, a chronic problem with clutter. And when they're looking at something obsolete, this antiquated, you know, cords that don't fit anymore uh, to any new technology, that type of thing, if they are resistant to that, here's the deal. You really cannot put a time estimate on this because the big... The big sort of, um, gosh, I, there's like a word for this, um, but but this this factor that you really cannot put um, any time limits on is their decision-making ability. So if you have someone who makes very quick decisions and you open a cabinet and it's filled with old cell phones and VHS uh, tapes and uh, slides of things that aren't very inter interesting, and that client says, yeah, I don't want any of that. That's junk. And they throw it away. Well, that just took one minute, really. Um, but as organizers, uh, what you guys are going to run into more often is that people are really going to agonize about these things. So things that we think, you know, maybe uh, trash or donate or, you know, things that aren't um, really necessary for day-to-day -day living, your client may really struggle with that. 
So here's the deal. You cannot give them a time estimate. And, and I kind of think of it like, let's say someone uh, was suffering from depression and they went to a therapist and during the first session they say, okay, when, how many, what's the estimate on when I'll be um, not depressed anymore? Right. I mean, you, you really can't do that. There's, there's no, um, there's not really a set time. You're just working through a process. So you're hoping that in your time working with a client and, you know, this person that, that's, that's sort of resistant and kind of stubborn, you know, sometimes you'll do a session with a client. Maybe it's my first session with someone and they don't get rid of much. You know, they have to think about it and we sort of set it aside and we're, we're putting categories together. And then I'll come back and we start talking about, okay, where are the slides going to live? Where are the VHS tapes going to be stored? Where are you going to, we need a whole drawer just for these obsolete cell phones. Look, where is that going to go? And, and once that kind of pressure gets on them about the organizing side of it, you know, they, they start to open their mind a little bit, hopefully, to it, it just kind of seem, seeming impractical that they can keep these things. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's really, and, and the thing is, if you said, okay, it's going to take me five hours to do this or three hours to do that, and they are really struggling in making those decisions, you, you can't really put um, a timeline on it. So what I would recommend and, and what I do with new clients, especially those uh, dealing with extreme clutter, as I say, let's do a couple of sessions together. You know, let, let's let's make a plan. Let's have a planning session. Let's do a consultation. Um, I always try to find the easy. This is actually a, a big thing in my course, working easy to hard. So maybe in that first session, work session with them, you're going to focus on easy decisions. Instead of just going for the first thing that's right there in front of your face, like stuffed animals, and it's really hard for them, talk to them about what's in the space, find those easier things, move those out of the space, and then kind of build your muscles to something harder. So um, I don't just go into a client's home and say, let's let's go through old letters from your uh, spouse who passed away. Something crazy like that that's like really sentimental, probably very emotionally charged. We're not going to start with that process. Maybe we're going to start with getting rid of expired coupons or expired food or, or something a little bit easier. So, so build up your client's muscle and, and then you're also clearing space in the way. So work uh, at the same time. So easy to hard. Um, yep. Sentimental items. Yes. Don't, don't start with that. Um, even if you're following the Kunmari method, uh, there's the the sort of five categories. Sentimental is last, so they really need to build up their muscles. So Angie, I would I would very much focus on um, finding working easy to hard, easy to hard, um, and and then building momentum and building space, uh, creating space in their home. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, your creative people, the, the arts and crafty people, the professors, the teachers with the material of, you know, past um, courses and that type of thing, this is, it's, it's, it's not easy for them to let go of, of those things. So um, if the craft area is, is, is emotionally charged, I probably would not necessarily start with that. I know a lot of artists I work with, they don't get rid of much. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe some dried paint and a brush that doesn't work so well, but uh, your artists are gonna wanna really hold on to the supplies because anything could be creative. So um, I think you're with the with the arts and, and canvases and paints and, and all of those crafty things, I think you're going to have to really uh, focus on storage and then focus on practicality and, and the current projects that they're they're working on. Um, gosh, I've broken down the the episode of Hoarders this season, the Tiffany episode in um, Wisconsin. You guys might want to check that out. But uh, Tiffany, by the way, was awesome to work with. She was one of those uh, hoarders. It's very rare 
but she had actually done a lot of therapeutic work before we came in and cleared up the house. And you can see it, it, it made a big difference. But I bring up Tiffany because she had a massive paint collection and it was this specific type of watercolor and this specific type of acrylic and and this you know type of brush for this type of thing so we had some tables put out we brought it all out you, th that's really a very 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 key piece to all of this is you you have to sort it all together because if you go into a client's home and you say hey do you want to keep this paintbrush. Well, yes, I'm an artist. I want to keep a paintbrush. Okay. Do you want to keep this can of acrylic paint? Well, yes, of course. I'm an artist. I paint with acrylics. So um, it doesn't really work that way. You have to get all the brushes out and lay them out. And in these extremely cluttered homes and what we did with Tiffany, we did it outside and it was raining, but we had a tent and a table, uh, but we had to move it outside so that we could even look at all the watercolors together and all of the other um, paint supplies together so that she could make some smart decisions about what was enough to keep, um, you know, based on keeping some of those, uh, you know, setting some boundaries and limitations and that type of thing. And that's what you're consulting your client. Um, and that's why it's so important to go through categories of things because, you um, just this morning, I, I actually filmed a project that I'm going to be showing to you guys. I, I don't know. I might, I think I'll put it out as a, as a YouTube video next, probably in January. Um, but um, I, I went ahead and like set up a project actually at a, a family home that I'm clearing out. But I set it up just like we do on Hoarders and I have my staging area, pulled everything out, categorized it. And uh, one of the big categories is camping gear. And you think, well, camping gear is pretty useful. You know, someone may use that in the family or, or I could donate it. Um, but you really have to see it all together because if I just looked at a tent, I'd say, yeah, okay, sure. Love to have a tent here on the farm for a family member to visit. But as I brought everything out and there were four um, sleeping bags in six different tents. Some of them were missing parts. Uh, some of them were different sizes. Some of them were backpacking tents. Some of them were large family tents. So, but I'd have to really see it all in order to make a good decision. So that is part of the work we're doing as organizers is to do all that sorting, pull everything's out, um, pull everything out. And then, um, you can make better decisions. So that's what we're doing for our clients as we're going through these spaces. All right, let's see what we've got here. So if you guys are just joining, I see a couple of people logging in here. We are talking about the business of organizing. And so for those of you guys who are thinking about the profession of, of or getting into the profession of organizing, or those of you, it sounds like a couple of you guys already have clients and, and you're working. Um, so I'd love to answer some questions about the business or client struggles, that type of thing. Um, yeah, just chime in here in the comments and uh, we'll continue our conversation. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And um, this is this is so crazy. I was, I was going to talk to you guys about this earlier, but I just thought of this. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but November, when it gets into mid-November, all I do is my goal planning for 20 for the next year, for 2022. So often in these lives, I update you guys with, okay, I've got this video coming out or, you know, this thing coming up, but I, I am really looking for a very quiet end of year. <laughs> and so today I was already making all my goals and lists and business things, business ideas for 2022. Uh, so I don't know if you guys get in uh, that frame of mind this time of year, but let me know. I uh, I don't know if it's because it's winter or it sort of gets to be holiday time, but I am just, I'm ready to hibernate and get ready for 2022. Okay, so Candace says, I launched my business a couple of months ago. I'm hoping you can give me advice on how to work with realtors. Um, what should you include in presentations when you are trying to sell your services? Uh, yeah, I mean, realtors... <sighs> I have found them to be a little bit of a, of a fickle bunch. Um, they have been a an okay resource 
for me, or um, I should say a referral source for me. Here's what I'll say for one. Um, find out what they need, you know, and that's really true in like all of our marketing, but contact some realtors and I would approach it as, hey, do you ever find a home is just too cluttered for you to put on the market? And if that's the case, what do you do? And then sort of kind of leave it open for them to, you know, if they say, no, that's not a problem. I sell messy hoarded houses all the time because I, I don't know where you guys are, but where I am, it's 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 like a hot real estate market. So whenever it's it's kind of easy to sell a house, I think realtors are a little less concerned about staging and 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 having it just perfect. Um, but that would be my question to every realtor I came in contact with, a networking group, or uh, in my community. I would say, has this has this ever posed a challenge for you and what did you do? Um, because that's really what we can do as organizers to help real estate agents. They, they want to sell homes faster. That's sorry. Sorry to insult any realtors that are watching. I know your job is more complicated than that, but I just think their motivation is very much get this house sold. I mean, that's what they're hired to do. So if there is a way as an organizer that you can help them do that, and that's where I've been called in and even hired by a couple of realtors for that specific problem, that they just could not have an open house or really uh, take any nice pictures because the house was too cluttered. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a hoarded situation. I mean, that that's kind of a whole thing. But sometimes there's just too much stuff out. There's just too many, um, there's too much furniture. There's too many, maybe there's boxes that are stacked around uh, or things on the stairs and it's a trip hazard or the kitchen's kind of overloaded. And it's a bit of a fire hazard and it's just not going to take really good pictures. Uh, but if you can form that relationship with them and say, hey, call me in. And it, it may be, you know, you're really going to have to talk to them about, is it something where they would actually consider hiring you? And then they're going to, you know, you're going to uh, a contract with the real estate agent and they're going to sort of include that in part of their services that they're going to find a team of people to clear out this house to make it lovely and get it on the market. Um, or is it just something that they're going to pass your name on to their customer and say, hey, your house really isn't ready to go on the market now, but if you call this organizer, she's going to help you remove clutter and, you know, we'll set a, a goal of, you know, 30 days or two weeks or whatever it takes to get, um, to get your house listed. So yeah, Candace, that's how I would approach real estate agents, you know, find out what they need and if it's a good fit and then, um, go for it. Yeah. I mean, I think a good networking relationship is a win-win. So when I'm networking or, you know, trying to form a new, and, and by the way, you guys, I know a couple of you guys are in here from my coaching program, but you know, my big, big, big push with, um, with getting clients and staying in business and what I, I coach my uh, folks to do is to get referrals within your community that's really going to keep your business thriving. Because guess what? You're going to be in a house all day working in someone's kitchen or kid's room or closets. You need to make sure when you leave that you have a job for the next day or the next week or that you're booked out. So um, you're not going to be able to do all those marketing efforts on your own. You're really going to need people out there also referring business to you. And uh, building that, that network of referrals is really going to be key to that. So, <laughs> noise complaint. Um, so I'm just starting out organizing for others. Should I charge them for the shelving materials at that time or after the job is done? Oh, this is great because one of the things I wanted to talk about today was buying the products and the containers. So, um, so my system is always, you know, step one: gather and sort like items make decisions based on categories, and then I do something called the put away. So that's my GDP. So that that's kind of my, my method for uh, most organizing jobs. So shelving materials, 
are part of the put away um, and any of those containers that you use. So on a typical project, you know, I'm going in, I'm doing the sorting, I'm doing the decision. That may even be a session or a couple of sessions. And then I'm going to move to recommending uh, storage. And so at that point, I uh, what I've really found that I love is actually purchasing the storage while I'm in a session with my client. That way, if I do need to get, you know, $800 worth of um, shelves for a garage, you know, wall to wall, you know, metal uh, uh, book, not bookcases, but, you know, shelving system, I could have them pay for it directly and then have it delivered to their home. So uh, let's say we're, we're going on a Lowe's website. I can actually do that as part of the session. And then also I'm not leaving the session and going home and working for an hour off the clock to, uh, which you can certainly pay for that time, but you know, um, you, you want to charge them for that shopping time. So um, it's not so much when the job is done, but I would say it's sort of three quarters of the way through. So I never buy my product or my shelving until I know everything has made it to the keep category and then I've sorted like items together. Um, so for example, I was working in a shed yesterday. It's beautiful fall weather here in Virginia. Great time to get those sheds done. And thankfully now they did already have a shelving unit there that I was able to repurpose. But if they didn't, um, what I had done is, you know, sorted everything to like categories and they had a big category of gardening, you know, gardening supplies. And I knew I needed like one shelf just for that category. So if the client didn't have that shelf, once I had identified and talked to them about what they were eliminating, what they were keeping, I would go ahead and order it and then have it delivered. And then we could put that together for the next um, session. I mean, sometimes people if there's a couple of people at home, they'll go run out and get it. And then, you know, if I'm doing a full day, um, but typically I need all the, the time during the day on the first session to, to do the sorting and then get the uh, material later. So yeah, hundred percent, you're going to charge that to the client. That's not going to be an expense for you. And um, like I said, it's kind of three quarter. It's definitely because once the storage the shelving system and the containers are purchased, then what I'm going to do is, of course, the fun, beautiful organizing, right? Where you label things and you stack things, and then your job is completely done in that area. So it's about three quarters of the way through and um, absolutely charge them directly. You know, if there's just a, a few little products, um, I will purchase them and then invoice the client. But if it's really going to be like hundreds of dollars in product, I do like the client to, to buy that direct because it's just, it's just easier on the invoicing side. And then I also have closet designers who will come in and build a custom system. And so that um, is something that the client is going to pay directly to the, the closet installer. <clears throat> Yeah, Nikki, you're you're right. So when I started out, there were really were not very many organizers. And of course, we didn't have Facebook and Pinterest. And um, you guys are going to laugh, but I had to run a yellow page ad and it was very expensive. And you guys should be very thankful that you can now just start a Facebook group or uh, an Instagram account for free and not have to, to do a face uh, to do a yellow page ad because uh, it was kind of expensive. Yeah, I mean, I really, my my first order of business was networking. And at the time, we didn't have a NAPO chapter in um, my area. And NAPO is the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. And, um, and yeah, so uh, I actually became, I, I sort of founded the chapter in my area and, and, you know, all that fun stuff. So what I did was I actually invited other organizers to come and we'd have lunch and we'd talk, but they immediately became a referral source for me. And so I'll give you an example. I, um, I was working, I had a corporate job previously and I was organizing information as a data analyst and I was pretty comfortable on the computer and, um, any type of uh, paper or information organizing. 
And so I was sort of talking to some of the other organizers and they're like, I hate that. I hate doing that. I want to do closets and kitchens. I don't want to do the home office. I don't want to touch a computer. I don't want to get into any type of you know financial organizing. And so guess what? They referred those jobs to me. And even though, of course, they were already working with the client, now the client had two organizers, you know, me to do home office and information, and then the other organizer to do closets and that type of thing. So um, really, that that was key for me is, is getting those referrals. Uh, kind of early on, too, I joined a networking group called BNI, Business Networking International. They, um, with my coaching students I've talked to, they, they're very much still around. I know COVID was a little weird. It's probably a lot of virtual networking. Um, but yeah, local networking and building your referral system. 100% that really hasn't changed. Um, I think you guys do have a little bit of a boost with getting your name out there now with social media. Um, Which by the way, in 2022, I'm going to have more um, Instagram kind of savvy stuff for you guys as professional organizers. So keep an eye out for that. I already gave it to my coaching, my last kind of coaching group, but I'm going to be expanding on that and offering it to everyone in a couple of months. Um, But yeah, I think you guys have a a bit of a boost now with getting that information out there, but you 100% still need those referral sources in your community. Let's see. Um, I think part... You know, I, I'm not real. Yeah. I mean, I think I personally like to slow down during the holidays, but I'm not sure. Um, I've gotten a lot of calls that like week before Christmas uh, and, and, you know, this is going to be a weird year because last year no one had a lot of people to their house, but in previous years I was getting those calls of, Hey, I'm having, you know, my whole family over and I, I didn't get my organizing projects done for this year. Um, but I think personally, I like organizing more in spring and fall because I can get outside and I can pull things out and I can do the garages and all that fun stuff. Um, let's see here. Yeah. I mean, this is interesting, Nikki. Um, you know, I really have not had this problem where people ask me to clean. Um, I don't know. I, it, You know, it's interesting. I've kind of noticed a trend in the last couple of years with um, like Thumbtack in my market. There's a lot of people that advertise as cleaners and organizers, um, kind of a, a one, which I think I see those as two completely different professions. Um, but, but yeah, I, I don't know. It could be a little bit of, you know, your, your marketing. Um, you might need to really educate people in your community the difference. If, you know, if you have a Instagram account or a Facebook group, maybe you want to start posting distinctions between, you know, what cleaners do and what organizers do. Um, but yeah, I think you might have to kind of educate your community a little bit more uh, because I have noticed that trend of of the dual businesses, especially coming through um, those like job referral sites. But I can tell you in my market, um, it's it's really a completely different price point as well. So um, even though, you know, like a thumbtack or something might be an okay referral source for you getting started, you might want to steer clear of that too, because it might just be where you're, you're, net, you're marketing your um, business. <laughs> yeah, so there's a, a dating myself with the yellow pages. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of strange how, you know, I think of starting this business 20 years ago and... There, there's still those core um, resources that allow us to keep or allow me to keep getting business, which is the referrals in the community. So that really, that really hasn't changed. But um, like I said, it is a lot easier 
to uh, put yourself out there as a um, an organizer on Facebook and Instagram and that people just know what it is now. Like I remember one of the first organizing shows that came out, I think it was called, well, I think there was Neat House or it was like, is it Clean Sweep? What was Peter Walsh on? I don't know if you guys, uh, I mean, Peter Walsh went on to be Oprah's organizer and, and write all these books and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, he had a show. And I remember that was a big deal. Because it's like, ah, people are now going to know what organizing is. But it, it's crazy, guys. I still think this is a pretty, th there's a lot of room to grow in this industry as as organizers. I think there is... Um, there's more play. It's it's still I I still think there is um it's still kind of a, a cottage industry or, or a, a niche industry in in many places, but I think it's on the rise. So um yeah, if you guys are just coming in here, we are talking about the business of organizing and also clearing extremely cluttered homes. So uh, happy to answer any questions that you guys have about that. So I did get an an question over email I wanted to share with the group. And that was in regards to should you work with your client or should you work in a home where your client is not there? And then what happens if your client accuses you of, of you know, stealing something or, or you can't find something? And I have to say, kind of knock on wood, this actually doesn't happen to me. Um, so I was kind of thinking, well, why, why is this not really an issue? Um, I think one thing is we really want to build trust with our clients. Okay. So that might take a couple of, of sessions. And, you know, I always start with people as a, um, a phone consultation and then I go in and do you know, maybe a planning session. And then, so by the time I start really going through their stuff, we know each other pretty well. Even if they were a stranger a week ago, I know them them pretty well. So, you know, make sure that you're taking time to build trust with your client is very important. And then I would just be very mindful to not remove items without your client's permission, obviously, right? Um, so a trick that I use is when I'm going through uh, someone's belongings, I'm doing that initial sort, even if the client is not right there with me or, or right there in the room, because I'm just putting things in a category. So they don't necessarily have to, to be present for that part. I, if it is a brand new client or someone I'm just getting to know kind of what, what they uh, want to keep and don't want to keep, I will just have a suggested trash area. So I don't even pick up something, even if it looks like really obvious trash to me, I don't put it just in a black trash bag, you know, right at the beginning of our session without consulting with them. I uh, may have like an open box or sort of a tabletop or a little area where I'm putting suggested trash. And this is, um, I've used this technique on hoarders before um, because they don't know me. You know, I'm just coming in and, and sometimes people are really defensive. They're like, oh, you're the person here to throw all my stuff out. I'm like, no, not at all. That's it's actually not <laughs> what I consider my job to be at all. And um, by by having those things together, it's, it's a little bit of a test with that person. And you're also building trust because then you can go over to an area, let's say you've, you've been sorting for half an hour and then you kind of bring someone in and you say, these are, these are items that look like trash to me. Do you agree or is there something from the space you want to keep? And now they have to look over that table of, you know, that maybe some, some things are a little damaged or, you know, just things that don't look very high value to you and they can pick out something that they want to keep. This is great too, by the way, for you guys who are clearing out kids rooms and you're trying to organize a kid space and the whole floor is covered with a million tiny little toys. Uh, this is a, tick, a, a trick I'll use with them as well. I'll kind of gather up several little categories of things and then I'll show them a box and say, what do you want to keep from this? And it's easier for them to pick out, you know, the Legos or the Barbie shoes or whatever that kind of high value item is for them. And then we can dump the rest, either, you know, donate or, or trash. So, um, 
so yeah, I mean, I would I would definitely build trust so that people don't think you're just going to come in and throw away all their their valuable items, and then really involve your client with the session. I mean, I don't. Um, I will allow a client to kind of pop in and pop out of a session, um, but I do want them to participate. And you know, I really would not recommend doing this without your client's involvement. They really have to be a part of the decision making process. So even if you're doing some sorting on your own, have them come in, and then you do not have to take anything off the um, premises with you. You know, often I'll load my client's car with donations and then I'll, you know, kind of set trash bags in sort of one corner of the room. So it's really their responsibility to, you know, move out the trash, move out the donations. And and then there really should be no issue of, you know, all the organizer, you know, took something. So it really hasn't been a problem for me, but but those are the things I adhere to. So um, give give that a try and, and hopefully that's not going to be a problem for you. Let's see, an idea for getting the word out do you ha if you have next door, absolutely. Yep, a good place to tell your community, right. Yeah, and so next door, because it's localized to your um, community and in some of the uh, Facebook groups as well are, are for your, your local area. Um, and anytime you're in an app like that too, it's you really kind of want to monitor the comments of people because sometimes someone might chime in and they're actually looking for an organizer or they're looking, you know, they may say, oh, you know, my my parents need to move to a smaller house or downsizing. I don't even know where to start. Do we have any local resources? So uh, I would join a couple of Facebook groups too, you know, your next door group and, and really look for those. Um, which is great because then it's, you know, you certainly go on and say, hey, I'm a new organizer, check me out. But you'll, I think you'll get a little more traction if you're kind of monitoring it. And then when someone has that need, you want to be the person that, that they call. Um, yeah, the, the, this is an interesting question about involving the kids while sorting through toys. <sighs> It's probably, it, it sort of depends on their age. If they are under five, I would say probably absolutely not <laughs> because they'll just start playing with things. So they, um, it's really a little counterproductive to have them in the space initially. Um, that kind of five to 10 range, I usually start with a discussion of, um, and, and five is probably a really good age to, to sort of start them on an organizing system, you know, kind of younger than that, you're just helping the mom kind of, or the dad sort of pick things up and create some storage systems. Uh, but a great thing to do, and I always do this with, with any kids and of course teenagers that I'm working with, I find out like what is really important to them. So, you know, you're looking over that room and certainly by the time they're about 10 years old, they may still have baby stuff in there, toddler stuff, toys they had when they were seven. And they're looking back going, oh my gosh, I don't, what is all this stuff? So instead of before I really sort, I find out what they absolutely want and what they want to keep. So I was working um, with a young woman, she's probably eight or nine years old, and um, I said, okay, you know, what do you, and she loved horses. Horses were her thing. Like, that's, that's what she wanted to play with, that's what she wanted set up. I said, okay, wonderful. So I knew before I even started sorting that we were gonna keep everything horse related. So then what I could do, and I did the sorting without her. I don't know if she had, I think she had a, a, I don't know, she had to go somewhere. You know, kids are so busy these days. You maybe had a horseback riding lesson, but she had to leave. And so, but I, ha I was able to talk to her before. And so she wasn't there for the sorting, but I knew that what we were absolutely going to keep and a general plan of how the room was going to be set up, if I needed a homework station and what size, they wear, it's big for kids. What size are they currently wearing? Because, you know, they can grow out of clothes every six months. 
Um, so then I don't think they really necessarily need to be there during the sorting. I'd probably only bring in um, maybe like 13, 15, you know, the, the later teenagers. I'd probably incorporate them as, to help with the sorting process. Um, but the younger kids, I, I found it's better to kind of get some information. Then they leave. Then I come back and I say, okay, what from this do you want? And did anything in here interest you? And I'll have kind of boxes and piles set up. And what's wild is often they say no. They're, the kids are great usually. They're, they're ready to go. As long as you kept that important thing, you know, as long as you kept the Legos or the horses or the Barbies or whatever was their thing, they're usually pretty good about letting other categories go. So I think you can do the sorting without them. Um, and let's see, I think this is kids related. So he's just not having a child of a client go through. Yeah, I mean, I, I would do the sorting and then I would find out from them what, what they like to play with. And then I would make sure I really do that up in their room. Like, hey, this is, you know, with the... The girl who's really into horses, I set up like a like a play area and like a bay window. And it was like, horses, look. And then they kind of, they don't seem to be that bothered if the other things kind of kind of go away. I mean, with their permission. But uh, honestly, the, the hardest thing I have with the kids is that the parents want to keep stuff. And I do always separate the child from the parent in, in the sorting and decision-making process because the children will have one decision that they want about what they like to keep. And then the parent often comes in and says, I can't believe you're getting rid of that. You really loved that five years ago. That was really expensive. So then the uh, child starts questioning their decision-making. And then you can kind of see how they are going to have a hard time eliminating things in the future. So, so I go, I'd, I'd rather work directly with the child and then set it aside. And then I have a conversation separate with the parent to say, these are the items they no longer want to keep. Now the parent can keep them because it's half the time it's sentimental to them or they can donate them or they can resell them or they can give them to the cousin or whatever. But I like to have this conversation separate. Otherwise it gets, um, I just, I can see in the children that they're starting to question their um, decision making. And that is not good for becoming, for staying organized uh, in the future. So it actually can be, I think, very detrimental if the child then starts questioning and then they start keeping things out of guilt and shame and fear. And then all of that gets layered on. And then, of course, we know what happens later on in life when uh, people can't get rid of stuff. So um, that's <laughs> that's my big tip for, uh, for kids' rooms. But uh, uh, I love working with the kids. They're a lot of fun. Um... Okay, well, I guess we're going to kind of wrap up here. It's almost 3 o'clock. Yeah, so let's talk about some hoarders. So currently, season 13 is airing on A&E. So this week, uh, it was Monday night, we had Carl in Tampa, Florida. So I was down there in Tampa. Uh, it was very hot. We filmed that over this summer. Uh, boy, Boy, Carl, I don't know if any of you guys saw that episode, but uh, my dear man, Carl, lovely, lovely man, but not not quite able to live independently and make good decisions. So uh, that was that was a tough episode to watch, but I'm really glad we were there because um, there were some things that really needed to be taken care of, and I hope that the the show really really forced those things to happen. Um, so that was Carl last week in Florida. Next week. I think they're, um, I don't think they're going to skip any weeks. And this is on the A and E network. So you do need your um, cable login or you can watch it live. It's Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I think next week is Houston. Um, another hot, hot week <laughs> as we did that in the summer. Houston. Houston's an interesting, very nice, very nice woman. Um I think you guys will like her uh, just she's really just going through some grieving and, and that triggered. She's actually very organized and very neat. 
um, earlier in her life. And then she had a, a traumatic event and it was kind of a line in the sand. And then she started um, shopping a lot and just wasn't really able to, to get things put away in her home. So that uh, created a, um, a hoarding situation. So she's kind of an interesting one. So I think we're about halfway through season 13. Um, I think after that, um, I know I worked in North Carolina and Asheville, which was great because that that's not too far from me. And I love that city of Asheville, North Carolina. So um, that'll be coming up. So we're about halfway through season 13 of Hoarders on the A&E network. And um, so I am on season 12 and season 13. So um, this season, if you've started it, um, I was on the Tiffany episode, the Carl episode, the um, Terry, Terry episode. I think those are the ones that have filmed. And then I've got um, two or three more coming up. I know Houston and then Asheville. So that's season 13. And then I did about five episodes in season 12, starting with Forrest, who was in Virginia. That's how I connected with the show when they came to Virginia. And those, again, are still on A&E. Now, at some point, they're going to drop on Netflix. And then I think um, certainly more of my audience would have sort of access to it because I know um, people tell me all the time, I don't have cable television. How do I watch a show? But I do believe they are going to be on Netflix. So they're probably going, I think season 11 is on there now. Um, and I started on season 12. So you'll be able to watch season 12 on Netflix. I'm hoping within the next couple of months. But I will certainly let everyone know on my channel about that. Because um, then you can, you know, just stream it kind of whenever. Or you can, you, you know, you can kind of, they'll drop the whole season at the same time. So, um, so, so yeah, and then I'm going to be putting out some content about those episodes, probably more when they hit on Netflix. Um, but I might do something on a couple of episodes from season 13, because like I was saying at the beginning of this live, they, you know, obviously they're focused on the story, they're focused, focused on the mental health piece of it. Um, but I'm always excited to see the clean out, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> so you'll see me in the background moving some boxes around and doing that. And then they go to the reveal and it's like the house is, I mean, pretty much all the episodes I work on, I know, you know, we really clear out a lot of space inside that house. And so, you know, we're in there, um, but they never really show a lot of the clear out process. So I'll do some videos on YouTube to kind of, um, explain that what goes on behind the scenes so when they go to that reveal you're not like how did this just happen i didn't even see any of this um because there's about 200 hours that they don't even show that they film um and of course a, a lot of that cleanup it just happens on the show in the last you know 20 minutes or hour or something so um so yeah stay tuned with that and then again if you're interested in learning how to clear out extremely cluttered homes check out my course tackle the hoard and uh, if you're on my email list you'll probably get some emails about that this week and then i um also as i post out uh, videos about that topic i'll put it in the description of course i'll put it in the description of this video and and some upcoming videos Awesome, guys. Well, enjoy your day. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for uh, joining me. Awesome. And good luck to all of you. Um, email me with questions uh, for in the future, uh, for future lives. I'll definitely do one in December. And then get ready for January. All new content coming to my YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit the bell so you get notified when new videos are being released. Thank you guys, have a great day and we'll chat soon.